Okay, so now that we know a little bit about diabetic retinopathy and the damage to the blood vessels, I want to show actual pictures of patients with diabetic retinopathy. So here on the left, we have a normal looking retina. So now this is really a picture of the optic nerve, the blood vessels seen here as these red lines, and then the macula. So remember in our diagram, which I've uh, placed up here, the macula was the central portion of the retina. So if we were to focus in on this uh, circular region in the back of the eye, this would be called the macula. So maybe I'll just label sort of this generalized region in the center of the retina as the macula. And if you remember, diabetics get damage to the retinal blood vessels and that can cause bleeding and swelling in the macula. And if we look over here, on this diagram on the right here, we have again the optic nerve, we have the arteries and veins. Uh, the hue and the color of this photograph is a little bit different, but I'd like you to ignore that and just focus on the fact that this patient has some areas of bleeding, which you can see here and here, little splotches of red, almost like little splotches of red paint. That's blood that's leaked out of these vessels. And then you might see these little yellow specks, and these yellow specks are cholesterol that's leaked out uh, of those blood vessels. So there's bleeding and cholesterol, and what you can appreciate is that there's fluid and swelling also in this area. So this patient has one of the complications from diabetic retinopathy, and that complication is macular edema. So one of the main causes of vision loss in diabetic patients is macular edema. And that just means edema or swelling, and I'll put that in parentheses, swelling of the macula. And that edema and swelling comes from leaking blood vessels. So macular edema is one of the most common causes of vision loss in diabetics. And when you see your eye doctor uh, for a diabetic uh, eye exam, uh, they will look for signs of macular edema. The other complication uh, that happens in more advanced uh, forms of diabetes as the disease progresses is the growth of new retinal blood vessels. And what happens as the, as the disease progresses progresses and you get more and more damaged blood vessels, eventually the blood circulation to the retina becomes compromised. So the eye tries to compensate for this by growing new blood vessels. You might imagine that some blood vessels might start to grow out along the optic nerve or some blood vessels might grow in some other area to replace the existing blood vessels. Now one might think, oh that's a great idea, if you have damaged blood vessels, why not build some new blood vessels to replace the damaged ones? Actually this turns out to be quite a horrible idea for the eye because these new uh, blood vessels are actually diseased and they tend to be very fragile and they tend to bleed. So one of the complications from having the growth of new blood vessels in the retina is vitreous hemorrhage. Because these new blood vessels that grow in the eye are fragile, they can bleed into the eye and the eye can get full of blood. So you might imagine that if you had a situation where there was these new blood vessels and they started to bleed and ooze blood, all of a sudden your entire retina is covered by a layer of blood. And the vitreous, by the way, when we say vitreous hemorrhage, that refers to this cavity of the eye. So in front of the retina, uh, we have this sort of space where normally there's vitreous gel. But if that space gets full of blood, you can easily imagine that an eye full of blood isn't going to see light very well. So if I took a beam of light that was entering, let's say from this direction, passes through the cornea and the lens, and all of a sudden it hits that blood, this patient whose eyes full of blood isn't going to see well because the light isn't getting through. Similarly, you can appreciate 
in this photograph below, if we have an eye that's full of blood, then any light that's trying to get to the retina, trying to get to the macula, isn't going to make it there. So vitreous hemorrhage is one of the common reasons that a diabetic patient uh, might wake up one day and suddenly have extremely blurry vision or see black floaters in their vision because they see blood uh, floating in front of the retina. If we don't treat these blood vessels and we don't treat that bleeding, then we can get one of the very advanced forms of uh, diabetic retinopathy, which is scar tissue forms from those blood vessels. Scar tissue pulls on the retina and causes a retinal detachment. And this is really one of the dreaded complications of diabetic retinopathy, retinal detachment. Retinal de detachment occurs because these blood vessels are left untreated, they form scar tissue, and that scar tissue causes a retinal detachment. These are particularly bad kinds of retinal detachments that are very hard to fix. And even when you can try to fix the retinal detachment and, and attach the retina, it's a retina that's been severely damaged and injured and often isn't a retina that's going to work very well. And these patients often have significant visual impairment and often, unfortunately, go completely blind. And that brings me to the point that diabetic retinopathy is a very common cause of blindness in the United States. So when you see a diabetic patient who has kidney problems and foot ulcers, you have to wonder, perhaps they also do have some visual impairment. Vision loss from diabetic retinopathy usually comes from one of these uh, causes, macular edema, vitreous hemorrhage, or retinal detachment. These are the most common forms of vision loss from diabetic retinopathy. Now, the good news is that 90% of blindness from diabetes is preventable. And in my next video, I'm going to talk about the treatment of diabetic retinopathy.